It's out with a 5.7. Ghost number one for hip hop and RB, home of the Breakfast Club, state champ DJ Frosty in the building with two very, very special guests, two guys that are extremely important to the city of Montgomery. On my right, I got my guy Bow, the world famous international engineer. On my left, I got my guy who's done a, tons of work for the city. He's the first person I really knew from Montgomery because he's been putting in work for decades. Long time. A been long a time. Frank White is in the building. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Frosty, thank you for having us. Definitely a pleasure. So, so one of the first things I wanted to do when I first got here was get Frank White in the building. Right. That was like the first thing. Because, like I said, before I knew anything about Montgomery, I knew Frank White. Right. Frank White is, is who introduced me. Well, not physically. Right. But musically to Dobe. Right. And uh and so in this world I I look at a lot of DJs as my brother, you know, like that's my DJ family. brother. We family. We Definitely. go You know what I mean? So when I see things you know that happens online and things like that that's not just doesn't seem in character of what I was introduced to it makes me curious what what happened. You know what I'm saying? Right. It felt it almost felt like an entire city turned against somebody <coughs> who did so much for the city. And mm-hmm. now it you know, so to me like this had to be addressed. And Frank why I felt like Frank White needed to get his story out. His side of the story. Gotcha. You know, well, I appreciate that, what, bro, because a lot of people just, you know, don't aren't curious or don't really care to know or know what's going on or what happened. And they just, you know, tend to sweep it under the rug and go along with social media posts, which, as you know, and we all know, tend to get out of really what's not really going on. They tell to build, on, build, you know, legs of its own and carry on the other things that never even happened, possibly. Right, right. So. You know, and I I just kind of, I did. I felt, you know, like it turned its back on me and I kind of just shut down, Mm. you know, kind of just, I'd rather just shut down and step away from it for a second. So I got my guys Twin Beats and when I first started talking to them, they they would always mention a guy named Bow. And other people would mention Bow. I'm like, all the rap artists would mention Bow. So I'm like, who is Bow? I got to get, well, Bow, he he moved back home. He Mm -hmm. back in China. Mm -hmm. So. (laughs) <laughs> I got word that Bow was back in town. Right. So I was like, I got to get Bow in the studio. I got to talk to this guy because he's a legend. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. I mean, both of y'all are legends. But I was like, I got I never knew who, who Bow was. Right. So when I got Bow here and I talked to Bow, he seemed like one of the most genuine guys I've ever met off top. I was like, this guy is genuine. You know what I mean? Not, mm-hmm. not, you know, I don't know Bow's whole history, but he just came across as extremely genuine. And I wanted to, I was curious. He, he was the only person I really asked about between you mm-hmm. and Joe B. Mm-hmm. Because I knew he had real inside knowledge, right. information about what happened. Right. So from, from what I understand, so let's 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 go back because this is December, right? It's it definitely December. is every year, and, each and every year. And before we get into all that, I really want to know how you, what did you do? How did like how did you meet Doby? Tell me the the Doby story of how this thing came to play. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll shorten it just just for time purposes. We know we know you was killing nights. Right, right on, on the, the radio. radio. First of all, on the radio. Uh-huh. Doing mixtapes, you know, doing for, art, you know, did 2 chains Coding Cowboy mixtape, did artist mixtapes from around the city, did, um, you know, Rich Kids mixtape, A Trouble mixtape. Um, I forget what else, but was doing major artist mixtapes as well through relationships I had through other DJs, like, you know, how we knew each other. Right. Because as you said, yeah, DJ is a brotherhood. Right. Um, so we always like to help each other and never really fall out about anything never major yeah. a dj to another dj unless it's some real messed up stuff right but um so 
artists would come to me, you know, hey, Frank, can you do this mixtape? Can you, you know, get, play my song on the radio, do this and that? And Doe um, came to me and was like, you know, he wanted me to do his first mixtape. Now, did you know Doe before he came to you? No, I um, heard about him. Okay. And um, I want to say the first person that told me about Doe, and I, I'm not 100% sure on this, but I'm 98%, and it's um, rest in peace to Schooly. Oh, um, okay. Street, is that? No, 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 not, not, that, not, not that school. Schooly from here. Schooly okay. was a Thule who, uh, okay. he got, um, yeah, party promoter. Okay, okay, here. okay. I think he was the first one because I was actually managing a group called Two Lanes at the time. Mm-hmm. They had a hot song called Logged In and they had Dance With Me with DA on the hook. But this was, you know, years ago. I think about 2010, 2011. Um, so, Doe came to me and wanted me to do his mixtape, but I had a studio on Carmichael Road, and um, somebody had broken my studio and took my keyboard, wow. and somebody put it out there that Doe had something to do with it. So that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. So I kind of was like, "Hey, I don't want to." Yeah. 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 You could first yeah. Do it. But then he said, you know, he didn't have nothing to do with it. I found out who ended up having something to do with it, but that's what happened. And then later on, about six months later. Um, Big Hulk uh, was with Doe then, and called Doe was like Hulk called me. I was like, Yo, Doe, Doe wants you to do this mixtape, and he wants to work with you. I was, and we went and met him. I went and met him over at Atmosphere, outside of Atmosphere. I don't know if Bow was there at the time, but we were outside of Atmosphere. Uh, me, Hulk, and Doe, and um, I agreed to do the first mixtape. And um, after we did that, um, he came right back and was like, Okay, we got to do another one. And I didn't have any, you know, ties. I was just like, yo, you're dope. Right, let's do it. Yeah. After I realized the talent is when we did Definition of a Trapper 2, which was the second mixtape. I was like, yo, the first one was hard. This one's hard. And, you know, I knew he had talent. So yeah. I was like, you know, you, w- you want to keep doing these mixtapes and putting music out. Of course, I, I was playing songs on the radio, too. I could play... Not many DJs, as you know, could play what they want right. in their mix. Right, right. I was one of them that could play anything I wanted. If I wanted to play it five times in a row, my boss wouldn't say nothing. Shout out to Doughboy. I mean, he probably didn't like it, but he didn't. Yeah, yeah you had the green light. Yeah, I had the green light. Yeah. So I was killing every re- do do a Chief Keef remix. I was playing that, playing his his stuff, so-and-so. Yeah. Um, But we decided to do management. On the uh, after the second mixtape, um, which was definition of a trap or two, then let me find out came out then, and um, we started push. I said, I, I told him, I said that's a single there. He hated that song. Mm. He that's, and that's, see, that's what the DJs is for. Yeah, that's what no. the DJ is for. I'm telling and, you. And Bow could probably tell you he didn't really like that song. And the inter- interesting thing, how that song, I'll let him tell you how it came about because I think he was at uh, Bow Studio. But um, we did management right then, and um, my partner, I had a partner who worked with Interscope. He's actually at 300 now. I don't know if you know D, the Sun Ram, D and Shadow. Oh, I know Shadow. Okay, D, his partner. So okay. they, um, I sent him the project, and he loved it and was like, look, we want to do something with them, and we want to be partners with you in it. I was like, let's go ahead. Anything is, you know, better than nothing. So yeah. we did that. They flew Doe to New York, and – um. Did a deal with uh, Geffen, and um, we put Let Me Find Out. The original song was on BT Jams and was working before the remix came out. Mm-hmm. And then that's when the label kicked in and the TI stuff kicked in and, yeah. and all that. So that's that's kind of a background, uh, you know, basically. But it was a lot of, you know, it was a lot of work. It wasn't as, you know, just fall together right like, right like it did yeah um but it was special and, and that's something that i could tell from the get-go and i'm sure bow could and whoever who worked with though you knew that this wasn't ordinary right like yeah yeah i agree and I agree. it's like you know so everybody you know just knew that and went really hard at, at, at what they were doing for him and to try to you know get him to that next level when I when I first got here, I went to a few clubs uh, and I was hearing these Dolby records that I'd never heard before. What I do? I oh, call Frank. Yeah. I, I call Frank. I said, Frank, what is this? 
yo, like, why do y'all put this out? Like, what is going on? This music is, like, these are hits. <laughs> right, right, these right. bona fide hit records. Right. So how did, how did y'all, how did you and Bow meet? Oh, we, we met a long, long time. time. Because but, he but, was, but, he's no. the man in produce. He's the man in the studio to make them sound. Right. Like, yeah. even now to this day, even... You know, of course, as family, people have disagreements, and it happens. Even every t- when we had disagreement or something, somebody asked me, "Yo, where where do I need to record it?" Like the bow's the only place that you're gonna get yeah. the that you don't have to go nowhere else. Right? Yeah, that's yeah. the only place. And and when he left, you know that I don't know where people are going now, but it's probably a you know a exactly. void. But bow yeah, right. bow has always been the had the best sound in the city from. When he started, he I think I met him at Atmosphere through yeah. another mutual friend who is a producer, um, Chase and Dreams, who worked with Small Time Ballers, did their certified album, and uh, that's where we met, and we cool since, you know, always did different things. Yeah, and we were always cool, you know, all the way through until Doe died. All right, so let's yeah. let's let's get to this. Let's get to let's. Your right to go ahead. <laughs> All right, because this, this is crazy. Because you know, I've been so I was told by so many people not to do this interview. Okay, so many people. Yeah, over and over, made me scared. Really? No, you I, told me that I saw you before, and yeah. you mentioned that. Yeah. You th- it, it, and so I was like, man, I got to do it though. Right. Like I just I like I believe the city need I I believe that you know how some people need closure. Right. I believe the city needs this for closure. I agree. It's You're long right. overdue. It's, you know, it's long overdue. You know, getting y'all two guys together to, to to come in here and talk this thing out, talk about, you know, what happened, you know, the future, all that. I want to get into, into all that. So the day Doe died, I've, I've, I've heard some rumors, and I know they're not true. Mm-hmm. I don't believe it. I believe because I know you. You know, I know you would never. So, I heard that T.I. wanted Doby to go to Miami. Is that true? That's Is true. that accurate? Yeah. And, but he decided to stay. He was with, waiting on, um, I, bl- I want to say he was waiting on Hulk. Hulk had, uh, to go with him the next day. It, you know, it's, it, it's, it's just like how Biggie died. You know, it's almost like right, right. Biggie, you know, Puffy and want him to go to, anyway. Right. Um. Tell me what happened that day, because I, I, you know, I heard, you know, he was in bed asleep or something like right, that. Right. So right. Go to that day. Tell me about this day. Okay. The day of, which is, we had. I forgot what trip he just got back from, but I think it was from Arkansas. I believe. And we rented a um, a minivan for them to go to Arkansas, and I believe I rented it in my debit card or something. And um, or we went some we went somewhere, but I know I was in the in the car at one point, but then I wasn't on the trip. Anyway, we got back, and when they turned the car in, they charged for like a two I think it was two hundred dollars smoking fee. Okay, mm-hmm. this was this was the twenty seventh because it, it happened the twenty eighth at two in the morning. So this was in the morning. Doe calls me. He's like, "Man, why you take this uh smoke this uh smoking money out of his his show?" His show? I was like, "Bro, I didn't smoke in there. Why am I?" And he was like, "Man, nah, cause you smoked in it too." Which I I don't believe I did, but hey, I could have at first, but I, other people did after that. Yeah, right. But um, I was like, "Bro, are you really calling me about this?" I, I think it was a hundred bucks or one fifty. Are, are you really? I said, "Come by the apartment. Come get it." He's like, "All right, man." That's the last thing I ever talked to him. Mm-hmm. That was my last time talking to him. Um, and that was in the day, that day. Um, then I got a call that night at, and got woken up because I had my kids, um, mm-hmm. so they were with me, so I wasn't going out anyway. And I didn't know he was going to the club or nothing like that. Um, and um, I got woken up, and somebody said that he just got shot. And I, I was like, no, nah, you this probably heard something rumor right, right so i hung up i immediately hung up like nah, i kind of paid it no attention but then my phone rang right back again it's like yo the shooting just happened at the rose i think doe was shot like you think he was shot and then um and my, i got another call and um 
I just, when I found out that I, he had got shot, somebody told me that they saw him in the ambulance and he just got shot in his leg. So I was like, okay, well, you know, he praying, hope, but yeah. thinking. Right. But I still, I jumped in my car. I was staying on Vaughn Road and I sped to the, um, cause I found out that they wasn't taking him to Jackson and Jackson was like less than a mile away from the road, a hospital, mm. less than a mile away. And they made him go to Baptist South, which is, is farther. So I don't know who I called um, to see where they were going, but they told me they were going to Baptist South. And then I pulled up into the um, where the ambulance was in the emergency room parking. Like, they just unloaded. I was like, yo, you just have a big dude with an iPad. So you got to go around. So I went around and um, was walking in. And as soon as I was walking in, um, his sister comes out crying and say he's gone. Mm. Um, and then, you know, I went in and because I kind of didn't, you know, believe it really, like, yeah. you know, that. So I, I went in and saw his mom and, and the rest of the family in the um in the waiting room. And I just, you know, I sat on the floor and I had to make some calls and let people know what had just happened. And, so why did he decide to not go to Miami? Doe, Doe was thoughtful, um, and sometimes he didn't really – focus on his best interest, I think. Mm -hmm. And he cared a lot about his friends and people around him. And he's he was twenty two. He he didn't want to go off down, you know, without somebody or or or, you know, his friends, his homeboys going with him. So um I think that, you know, that's what happened. He just, you know, didn't wasn't thinking about the smartest move at the time. Okay. So, Doe dies. What? Where does the rift come between y'all two? I don't even know where it started, man. But I remember. I ain't gonna repeat what you said at the hospital, but when Frank said something at the hospital, it kind of disturbed me a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Um, he probably doesn't even remember what he yeah, said. I don't. But I don't want to say that right now. <clears throat> and um, I was a little bothered by that. Were you at the hospital? Yeah, I pulled up. Did you? Later on, because, like, Carlton called me first mm. in the middle of the night, and he's called me before. He's like, before is, like, the time he's called me, he's like, those have been missing. You got to go find them or, you know, whatever. Mm. Boop, boop. And I'm like, well, he's probably around, moving around somewhere. But, like, Carlton called me this time, like, he's gone. And I was like, man, you lying. So, and then you called me. And you confirmed it. And so I went down there, and then, you know, I saw you and, you know, saw Dariana and Tamara. And, uh, but anyway, that was that. You know, it was just a lot of mess then. And then, you know, maybe a couple of days later, you, you called me with Tip on the phone. Mm -hmm. And then that's, that's that with that. The thing with Tip on the phone, like, I wasn't in the business mode. You feel what I'm saying? Because, like, we all took a loss and, you know, personally, like, you know, you spend a lot of time with a person inside of the studio. Yeah. So you get to know him, all that type of stuff. How long, how long were you working with, with Doe? Like, how long did you know Doe before? I knew him for a while. Like, he came in with Perry Boy a long time ago in Atmosphere. That might have been 2008. Okay. And then, you know, I did some work for him then. Yeah. And I liked his stuff then. It's a real monotone. I think I said this before. And then he came back, like, 2000. 10 with Miss Shine and recorded something and he said hey, I'm gonna record it here and this is like right after Purple Rain with um El Pimonte mm -hmm. his, his studio got broken into and got stolen or whatever so he came in and started recording the the OAT1 and then the rest history um but the the thing was like the tip was saying some things like just real questionable you know what I'm saying but I could understand now you know because he was trying to get the music and get stuff done but like he was saying like and I'm gonna just go ahead and say it. He asked me like, "How much would it cost for you to sleep well at night to get these sessions off your hands?" And like, I wasn't really. I was kind of blown back by that, you know what I'm saying? And then I had to ask Frank later on once we got the phones, like, "Did you hear what he just said?" Like, and then we called D, mm -hmm. and then you know we talked to D, and D was like, "Ain't nobody going. You know, everything's fine. You know, don't worry about it. Just hold on to the sessions. Blah blah this and that." 
So it was just a lot of stuff going on then. So it's like a lot of stuff where that's where it kind of started, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, Frank was trying to get the stuff and like, I didn't know what was going on. And, you know, we worked out something where we would do Why, the Why song, which came out. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to mix it, you feel what I'm saying? I wasn't looking for any monetary va- money off of it, but, you know, I think it was not G, but the other dude, uh, I forgot what his name Gene. was. Gene. Uh, Nelson, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, so he was taught, met with them at the, you know, right after, was right after the funeral before, one of them nights or days mm-hmm. and we met there and chopped it up about what was the deal with the session and stuff and G seemed real cool mm-hmm. G Roberson mm-hmm. so um but anyway it just started from there man and then just kind of got wild like really wild um what else happened after that so you know then CBN wanted to do a a, a full mixtape and then you know Doe promised everybody that he wanted to release something in March 1st or April 1st, whatever one day that was, a DOA T3. But the process of how we would do it is like we would comb through stuff. And this is widely known, probably you see on other interviews, but we do a song and a hook, do a bunch of those songs, and then do about 50 of those, and then comb through the best 15, 17, 20, and then take verses from the other stuff that didn't make it and make it a complete song mm-hmm. and finish it up. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted to do that process at DOA T3, but never got a chance to do that. And then there was like a long email thread between me and Frank and Greg Calloway um, and I think D as well about what was going on and some words said there. So it just got, just got separated more and more and more and more. So the project came out, DOA T3. It did, you know, fairly well sonically i didn't like it you know what i'm saying and it is what it is but that's just me being engineer but that was that cbm drops and then something happens um the court awards kenny um those dad the uh administration and um then i hand over the sessions so so from that point to the time you hand over the session about how how long was that was like three, four months. Three, four months. From like, like I said, end of, end of December all the way to about, he got awarded the administra- administ- administration in May of 2000, was that 14? Or yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, 14. Yeah, so it was like three, four months. <clears throat> it just got crazy right then and there. So that's, you know, that's where it kind of started. And then it just got worse from there. What would you? Is there anything you you remember specifically that kind of put you over the edge? Like you know what? I don't, I don't rock with this guy no more. You know, there's some things he said, man. Like you got say stuff about, about, about my family. Like, I can't, 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 I can't <laughs> say it on like radio, like you know, because okay, okay, of like right, you know right, what I'm saying. Right, but it's right. like a lot of racial slur. Okay, okay, you probably okay. Don't even remember, man, because like. But what? But what was it over though? What? What? What was the issue? It was. Over the do- Okay, so it got worse, like really worse towards the end of 2014. Because, like, Kenny came to me, like, top of December. Uh, was like, hey, man, we want to put something out on Doe. You know, I got the, what you call it. And um, who was the lawyer then? Um, I can't remember. I forgot his name. Yeah. I know who you're talking about, yeah, though. You know but, tomorrow, I forgot yeah. the lawyer's name. But, but Kenny but, also ended up getting removed from it. and The thing like was, the- I didn't know he was removed by then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, yeah. In December yeah. 2014. Yeah, he got removed because he did something he wasn't supposed to. Yeah. So, so all right. So, like, Kenny comes to me, like, we'll put a song together, like, you know, what you think about Frank. I was like, and so he misinterpreted what I said or miscommuted what I said to Frank. And this what really got, you know, separated the water in the, what are you know what I'm saying? So, um, I say, well, you know, Frank was not really involved with the music side anyway, so, like, you know, he don't have to do nothing on the music side. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. W- which is true. It's true. Like, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'll be in the studio, do c- 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 Frank will go and do whatever you need to do to push the song so, you know, get it connected. You know what I'm saying? And that was the truth. Right. Mm-hmm. Kenny goes to Frank, says something crazy, like, like just kind of over-exaggerates, and then 
Frank texts me all this crazy stuff, man. Like, it's like, it's real bad, man. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So, and the thing was, it like, it got, it, 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 it got into the hands of this guy named Red Beezy around that time. And I talked to him on the phone once. And, like, the lawyer for him and Kenny wanted me to oversee what Red Beezy was going to do. And I was like, cool, fine, because I was going to fly to London at the end of the December. Uh, and he never, I talked to him once on the phone, the dude Red Beezy, and then I ain't hear back from him. And then next year. He got killed by his. I don't girlfriend. think it was next year, but. Yeah. Like the next year, he put out the. Oh, Tim oh. Murphy Jr. Oh, stuff, yeah, yeah. This and was. That some, looked horrible. It man. was terrible. Some artist in Atlanta that the lawyers over the state made a deal with to let him use those music, unfinished music, and put out. And of course, you, we, uh, yeah, we went about crazy. You gotta understand this. This stuff was very, like he says, was was very personal. But me and Doe's relationship also started off business wise as well. So right. our, our our relationship started business and grew personal. Right. So when that happened, I was trying to think, you know, personal and business wise. But the personal things, you know, I. It messed me messed me up. It was it you know I spazzed and yeah I said a lot of things to probably a few people that I shouldn't have said and it was just out of frustration and angerment and learned you can't act off emotion. Um, right, right. So yeah that that just kind of bridged the gap in between us and then you know we Who always would try to somehow bring it together but then it always I'd say something or it would, who knows what would. And actually, that Red Beezy stuff brought us together. Yeah, yeah. Because, because at like, first we were I like, "Take it, man." This like, was that. No, this was like a f- couple years later. It has been like 2016. Yeah, I think so. And I was like, "Man, you know what? That's it, man. Like we failed, and let this yeah. guy do it." Right. And it was horrible. Yeah. I, you know, rest in peace. But it was horrible. Right. right. Like this, like you don't do that. I mean, you go on in there, you look at it. You feel what I'm saying? Right. So, and like then Red Beezy start capping at Frank. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Like real hard. Yeah. About whatever. Oh know yeah, what I'm talking about yeah, he's threatening and, and stuff. Cause yeah. yeah. So like the thing was like I couldn't really reach Frank at the time either because I wanted to patch it up and like let's go ahead and just figure this out. You know what I'm saying? So I do that. He wasn't really respons- responding or responsive. So I called Dariana. I was like, Hey man, you're gonna have to try to facilitate this and be in the middle. Those but uh act like children's yeah, Dar- Dariana's, you know, uh fiance, you know, before right when he died. Two kids by though. So um I was like, You gotta talk to Frank, but act like you setting it up. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so we did. We met at the um Panera Bread and then um Carlton was there, Carlton Banks was there, and uh we patched it up. Right. It was a little Rift then, but we patched it up. You know what I'm saying? So, proceeding on to trying to put this together. And I was hopeful. You know what I'm saying? We were all hopeful. And then it got crazy again. <laughs> I but see, but this is the time where you capped that tip this time. Yeah. This, yeah. yeah, we got to talk about that because yeah, oh. we the world <laughs> was watching. Like I was seeing my Twitter, Yeah. and I see Frank White. And T.I. going there, I, I guess it had to do with the money. He was managing his son. Yeah, yeah, I was, and and but it 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 was it wasn't really about that. But I believe that's what, yeah, yeah, basically. Okay, yeah. okay, right. but yeah, and we can get into it. But. I mean, you know, we got laid out. That that happened. You know, what I'm saying it was a real thing. But so like we were trying to put the album together around that time, and you know that damaged some things you feel what i'm saying like carlton you know much respect to carlton he put his work in like he was getting features stuff like that he you know got some feet i ain't gonna name it right now but um hopefully it'll be on the album <laughs> anyway carlton did his thing you feel what i'm saying like whatever he needed to do i did my thing we put a lot of work into it we sent stuff to frank to get features for and around that time when that happened it just made it difficult to get anybody else on board from the industry. And, like, you know how this business is. Like, they turn your back, turn on your back real quick. There's a lot of other issues. <laughs> <laughs> a 
you know what I'm saying? And um, I go ahead and talk about it. Forget it. This is like we're not supposed to take any money. You feel what I'm saying? And that was the agreement. We went up to the state, you know, met with Ed Parrish, and you know, we thought the other lawyer that was um um working with Kenny, and we thought Kenny and the lawyer they had the estate, but it ended up being Ed Parrish, um, who's administrative of a lot of other states. Right. He's a probate judge. Is he a probate judge? I, I don't know. I don't know, but he's yeah, but he's I'm, the guy. Right. So we were bamboozled for about a month. Go over there and talk to him, and there were some issues there, and started falling out again over, you know, percentages or whatever like that. This is well documented out there, too, so, you know. Percentages to who? Well, it was originally supposed to be zero right? to everybody, right? And then I I wanted to, to, you know, me and Carlton... And Frank wanted to give all the to the state, right? Mm-hmm. But you know, Frank was going through some things at the time. So remember, you was over there at that car lot, walked over to me. We started talking, like, "Well, let's do ten each." I'm like, "Well, well." The Ed said at first, we sat there and we said, "Look, we don't want nothing." And Ed was like, "No, everybody has to get something in that meet." Right. The, I mean, he said like, that, well, but we, I was still. But see, and then I've also had a like would like to use a percentage to go to his mom and his kids now because they're his that mom's definitely not getting anything and his kids won't get anything until they're 21 so right now it's not gonna it's not helping any you know any of them to put it, anything out or to do anything yeah so it's just it just got crazy so the, the mom can't get anything no why is that she just only for the kids. Oh, yeah. the, the state. The state. Right, right. Okay. Well, it wasn't said. That's just what it is legally. I guess how. Yeah. Right, right, right. And they can't get enough to say twenty one. No. no. So would they would they be okay when they twenty one? I don't um, know. I mean, I you know. gotta understand. Nothing really came out. Like right, what right, right, album? Right, what right. big? As you know, yeah. he, he didn't go. He he was national to a certain extent because people knew of him, but he didn't he go triple platinum. No, if, right. if you went to. You know Wisconsin, or the, he, I don't think he was. Oh, where was he buzzing in Wisconsin? See, he only had a few mixtapes out. He's no right. official album. Right, right. there's right. never official album. Right, no, he never know, got to that. The point. Album never came out. So it's I mean his most streamed song. I want to think is is Kimo Sabi. It's like 15 million, and that's under you know yeah. yeah different artists. But I believe they could collect on it somehow if the Right, so you know it's a lot of issues with that, and then so I mean, and then uh, and then I don't mean to cut you off, but the reason why it goes in and out because you gotta understand we put a lot of time and effort into this, and and we lost because of it. And when things get too heated, I think we even tend to be like, okay, let's just back away and just because we're not, you know, we're not, we're not, you know, we're doing it strictly just. For dough, for do the right thing, right? To get his stuff out there, so it's not like we're doing it for anything, right? You know, because there, because there seems to be a huge misconception that you, I don't want to say you hid or you took or like, basically, there, there's this expectation expectation that a lot of money should have went to Doe's mom, that never happened. And, and I don't know where that would come from. I don't. I mean, I. I guess. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I didn't receive this. Right. Like, right. I don't know. I mean, I would. Th- yeah. No, I, I think somebody who was in position who, ha- if I had millions, would I have gave it? Of course. Right. I would have bought his mama house. Right. right. And a car. If if I had millions. Right. Right. Um. But I, you know, to this day though, I do still help his mom out. You know, she hits me up when she needs something but um yeah nobody got you know it's, it's it was just left doe was taking care of his mom his kids helping his sister with it which you know he was taking care of a lot, taking of, care a lot of people he he, yeah. he was the one taking care of them and when they left they nobody took their place yeah so it's a documentary that we we working on correct about it's all talk right now. It's all talk. You know, I mean, we got to get past that thing first. Right, right. 
you know what I'm saying? Because it starts here, to be honest. Like, yeah. you can't move forward yeah. until, you know, until this, until this works out. And the thing is, everything has, the ship has passed, the boat has sailed. Only thing that we could really do is just try to po- post everything up on streaming services and, you know, um, have that revenue for the kids later. I think I think the documentary is necessary. I yeah, mean, I, I, I agree. I, 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 could, I could definitely see it on Netflix right now. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. Um. So, to me, it seems like there was a lot of misunderstanding between y'all two. Some of it may not be so much of a misunderstanding. Um. But, what do you think? Is it anything that you you wanna you wanna say? To Frank, you know, anything that you feel like, hey, man, I rock with you or I don't rock with you. I felt this way because of this, you know, um, and, and we are, are we past this? Are we not past this? Are we, you know, this is what we got to talk about before we go forward. Yeah, I mean, you know, I never had anything against Frank. You feel what I'm saying? Like, never did. It's just like, it was like a say one thing, do another type of thing. But I had to understand at this point in time right now, by looking back in hindsight, that Frank was going through some things. You feel what I'm saying? That was a little out of his control. And I had to I had to give grace to that. You feel what I'm saying? So, I, you know, I, I ain't got nothing. You know what I'm saying? And Frank, we patched it up like Monday. Okay. Like mm-hmm. a week ago, Monday. Yeah. yeah. Without talking and since, when was that? 2016? A couple of years. Yeah, it's been a couple so, years, but yeah. So Yogi and then Tamara was on the phone. Tamara just—I didn't want to talk to Frank on the phone. Yeah, I was like, man, look. Tamara was begging. Though. I don't want to talk. Right. You know what I'm saying. Right. And then Frank got on the phone. We got into a little spat again, like we did at, <laughs> with Dariana. You know what, what, saying? what over what though? What, Same what? stuff. Like you know, this is how it's supposed to go on. This was my intention from the jump. This is what I wanted, and you know, it went left. You feel so, what I'm saying? So that. In that conversation, was it satisfying? Yeah, to a point. You feel what I'm saying? Like, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I believe it when I see it on paper. You know what I'm saying? And that's it. As far as, like, certain things happening to ensure that, you know, uh, the, the everything goes right. You feel what I'm saying? And then, you know, there's a lot of other opportunities that we missed that we could still make happen, yes. but whoever wants to get what, I don't care. Like, I know for me personally, like, I can't speak for Carlton right now. He might feel the still same way or, or not, but I still want to donate my portion, you feel what I'm saying, of mm-hmm. the reproduction and all this stuff, you feel what I'm saying, um, remix and reproduce, you know what I'm saying? I'm not asking for anything for that because yeah. I, you know, that would be just something I feel like that needs to be done. You know what I'm saying? Maybe something later on in on, on other things where, you know, it requires more work, like the documentary stuff or mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. Or, But as far as this thing, initially, man, just get it going. X me out. Let the state have it. Go to kids. That'd be whatever. It's not even a gift. It's just a, I feel like an obligation. Yeah, something. Right. Yeah. So what he just said, do you take – any issue with anything, or uh, is it? Are you you with it? You on board? You just want to let it go in the past? You done with this? Or how you feel, Frank? Man, I could. I don't think even if I wanted to, that I could ever be done with with trying at least. No matter if it, if we were, you know, twenty years from now. Um, but I do want to apologize to Bal for the things I said at the time. Um, and he's right. Like I told you uh, when we were coming in here. At the same time, you know, I had. a couple personal things i went through a divorce and and um this all happened around the same time then i had another child at the same time and and me i would have bet everything on my back everything that i owned that you know we would this was about to be how we were gonna live the rest of our lives you know well or, or a good part of it anyway yeah so when it took away you know a lot of people can't handle things mentally the same as other people do. And I'm one of them people who it just mentally, you know, took me out for a minute and yeah. down um, just because of how much it meant to me. Um, but me and Bow never had no problem. I'd love to do, yeah, I'm on board for anything, whatever we can me do. Me too, man. You know, it's just, 
Me too, man. It's definitely I'm, time. I'm on board, guys. It's like that. Cause, time, man. You know, Over time. That was like a, you know, from the outside looking in, mm-hmm. from what I've gathered, that seemed like y'all was a well-oiled machine that just got blown up. It was. Definitely. Everything was run. It was, man. It moved too quick, actually. It, it, it was. It didn't skip a beat. And with Doe being who he was, I mean, I'm. it just, it just everything ran perfect. And, yeah, but that was the engine. That, you know, it took the engine out of the car when, when that happened. So before we get out of here, um, if, there, if there was anything that you could do or y'all could do together, for Dolby's legacy, what would it be? Would it would it be the documentary? Would it be something else? It would have to be that album, whatever. I would think I would think a, a, a definitely an album is 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 needed, and a documentary I think is needed. I think a movie could be done. Yeah. I'd like to get a street named after Doe here in Ridgecrest oh, if yeah. if we could. Oh, right, um, that's a great idea. Right. You know, even if it's Glenn Thomas or Do- what we gotta do that we gotta get a petition signed. <laughs> Probably some city council. I know some folks on city council. I asked, but yeah. you know, just just something that can remain even when we're gone. Right, to to keep it. You know, that would be dope. Definitely, that'll be real dope, man. Listen, Frank White, Bow. This has been a pleasure. Frosty, man. this has been a Frosty. pleasure. Making history in the Appreciate gump. Appreciate you, man. man. Yeah. Making history in the gump. I'm just trying to get like y'all, man. Y'all made listen. Y'all made history together, man. You know, whatever, whatever it takes. That's 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 all I can suggest to y'all, right? Whatever right. it takes. We got whatever needs to get done. Whatever it takes, because this this was so important to the city, man. Y'all like when I got here, I could just, I could feel it, right? That that Dolby's passing. Mm-hmm. It was like letting the air out of a bag. It did, that's Ooh, how it exactly. That's how I felt. It just I don't in. think the city ever recovered. To be honest, yeah. yeah. No, definitely. Nobody did. You yeah. just got to move forward as much as possible. But like, right. we, it's you know, it's, it, it, like I said, it starts with me and Frank. We got to, we got to move forward, man. Yeah. Right. It's just, so I mean, it's only it's only me, yeah. me, you, me, him, and Ed make it happen. Really. Right. And, and Carlton. And Carlton, and, yeah. We shout out to Big Hulk, too. He, right. he was there, you know, a very important role. So, so Frank, is there anything you would like, you know, to say to the city? I mean, to the city, I love Montgomery. I always will. Um, I would like to, you know, I really believe that me and Bal could possibly, you know, do something again with if it's not, you know, with – different artists if he would if he if he would be interested in it but even if if not um i'm always looking i always would try you know still have the same avenues it's just now you want to focus what you put your energy into because you don't want to do it you know for nothing and not you know waste time so it's just different you know but yeah i'm open you know what i'm saying just let's work through this and and move forward that's the only thing, man. Take steps, man. Yeah. I don't want to take no leaps and bounds. Just take steps, move at a nice pace, get this out, yeah. move forward. So back to the T.I. thing. What? Tell us what happened. <laughs> what happened, Frank? <laughs> That's on you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean – it's really, I think, deeper than what what happened. So it's it's kind of hard to really explain it. Um, but after Doe passed, um, you know, me and Chip were still talking, and he offered, you know, you know, he, his artist he had, like, who, would you want to work with anybody, you know, mm-hmm. besides whoever he had? And I listened to him. He told me about his son. Listen to him. I said, like, oh, I think he's got potential. Um, he was thirteen at the time. Um, so. Fast forward, I managed him for three years till he was 16, um, you know, uh, and we were at a video shoot, and some uh, I got an old school car from Joe Street okay. for, the, for the shoot, um, but his friend pulled up a, in a different kind of car. It was an old school, but it was like a 1950s, like Al Capone type okay. looking, and yeah. Monty wanted like a, you know, a Caprice or a, one of them, you know, old school dunks, like 
Right, whatever. yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, um that right there, he he Damani kinda took it upon himself to say, you know, I, I don't think you're taking this as serious as I am after you know, I was there for three years and did all the stuff for him and he kinda said something like, you know, I think we're gonna touch touch your your percentage, which I just started to get, was going to get a percentage to get paid from doing stuff for him, and um really found out what it was though I believe is his dad that um the stuff that was going on about the dough stuff, mm -hmm. all the smoke and stuff people talked it, I I think he just didn't want that around at the time, mm. and um but that's not what I was told at first, which yeah. me and him we've known each other. I've, to get, you know everything he could have said something to me I always felt like you know to the side and say what's going on with this or why is this this but I felt like he was just trying to find a way to get me out of the picture if I'm saying anything so I um did what I learned not to do um which <laughs> is you know went to social Go media, media. Yeah. yeah right <laughs> and um yeah that so but we went back and forth a couple things in there and um since you know People have uh, got involved right away and support squashed it and everything. So y'all good now? You I haven't spoke. Okay, okay. Him, okay but okay. so you know, okay. everything's good though. That's what's up, man. And Damani's still doing good, man. I t he's gonna be the next J Cole. Okay. I've always said that. That's what's up. Yeah. That's definitely. what's up. All right. And, uh, about anything you, you know you wanna you know any shouts or anything you want. I mean. <clears throat> Just move forward, man. Get this going. Like I said, the the boat has sailed. The ship has passed. Only thing we do is just move forward, get this out of the way, get this like monkey off our backs, off of Montgomery in yeah. general. Yeah. However, I will say this: although, yeah, we completely missed the boat as far as time thing to put it out, but the music still, even today, sounds. As it's good as is, is stuff that's out, right. you know, that's out now. I mean, even some of the, you know, the newer stuff. So when I when I got here and um, me going to the clubs, I needed to hear what the DJs was playing because it was playing a lot of local music. Right. And I was hearing the Dolby records and it was going up. And also I had to go back and like listen to, you know, a lot of Dolby records I never heard before. Right. So. As I'm listening, I'm like, oh, my God, this guy is really the down south biggie. This guy is amazing. Yeah. He is amazing. He's right. a, like, I'm like, oh, he would have killed the game. Exactly. He would have killed the game. Exactly. So, uh, shouts to Dobie, man. That was a special talent. It was. Special yeah. talent. Right. Long live, though. Long, Long live, Dobie, man. It's Hot Little 5.7.